So I've got a question for you, the audience. Do you like werewolves, or at least a werewolf fan, and feel like they don't get enough of the spotlight in major fiction? Because they are always put side by side with vampires? And are you curious enough to read a little-known werewolf-centric series, which in my opinion blends fantasy and a bit of werewolf horror very well together? Well then folks, do I have the werewolf book for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be talking about the werewolf novel Albrim's Curse by Travis Powell, the first in three book Were War series. This one I would classify as young readers, but I feel as though adults themselves can also enjoy this. Now, one of the biggest highlights for this book, for me at least, is the fact that it actually brings werewolves into the forefront as an actual threat. They aren't just there on the sidelines, like say, with the Twilight series, and they are represented as a major threat, like for instance in Harry Potter where werewolves are seen as more of the underclass. But here, again, just like in Harry Potter, as well as here, they are both very real threats. Now, what I did like about this is the story it tells. The stories of struggle, going through depression, trying to find purpose even when the odds are completely stacked against you. Now, our story mainly focuses on the young man known as Aldrin, a 14-year-old boy looking to finally make his way into the world, wanting to do something to help out his village other than just helping to plant crops under the supervision of his badass Gran. And I say this with Gran, she is absolutely hardcore. She doesn't take anything from anybody. Like, you try to sass mouth her, she will sass you right back and make you work for her. Like, she does not take it from anybody. And not to mention, she seems very... What's what I'm looking for? Knowledgeable about the world, especially when it comes to werewolves. Now back to Aldrin, though. His biggest goal is to help out with a hunt. To help out with a wolf hunt. Because apparently in this world, across the many different villages, wolves, as well as quargs, which are giant humanoid pig people, probably similar to not the orcs from Lord of the Rings, but rather the Gamorrean guards from Star Wars. If you've seen them, you know what I'm talking about. But, not only that, but the biggest threat that they have to deal with is, of course, the wares, werewolves. And werewolves are exactly like the photos you see here, humanoid wolf men. And I gotta tell you guys, the way that this book describes werewolves is terrifying and actually makes werewolves seem more of a threat. It kind of reminds me of with the Van Helsing movie, where Van Helsing himself was like this massive humanoid wolf man as a werewolf, which was pretty cool. Now, what I did like about this is that Alvarum does get his chance to help out in a wolf hunt, him and his father Borel. They go with their local village men to go out and start looking for different wolves to hunt, especially because they've been harassing the fields for a while. But during this time, Alvarum's hometown of Kabul comes into attack, and the defense, of course, is led by Graham, who realizes that they aren't just dealing with a random pack of wolves. They are being led by a were. And unfortunately, silver for them is in very low supply. The only thing they have are these silver candlesticks, which during the whole siege on their town, they're trying to melt to like liquid silver, or at least to like put them onto their weapons. Which is pretty smart. It's kind of similar to how in Castlevania, the Netflix series, that Trevor Belmont told the men as they were trying to defend the village of Greshid to put salt onto the wound, onto their blades, in order to infect demons and vampires. Which I thought was pretty cool. Anyways. During all this, Olbrim and Borel make their way back to the town, and they try to help deal with the wolf incursion, but the biggest threat of all is the werewolf. And according to later on in the book, it actually states that this werewolf itself was diseased. Which, just from the description of this in this book, you actually get the feeling that this werewolf is 
unlike any others. Like, there's something inherently wrong with it. Judging by the fact that it's foaming at the mouth, it has, like, more of a crazier, rabid look around it. Like, it's not fully aware of what it is doing. Like, it's more of a rabid animal than normal. So, long story short, they do manage to get the candlesticks melted in time, but just barely. Like, Gran is busy setting up a whole defense around the tavern, with Wolfsbane around the windows and doors to ward off any wolves, judging by the smell, as well as trying to keep trying to melt the silver candlesticks as a weapon against the werewolf. Which does prove effective, but judging by the whole fight, which was very well written, by the way, you really get this idea that it's like a hopeless siege. Like They are just throwing everything they have, from a shoe to boiling pots of soup. These are just regular townsfolk. These are not armored knights or soldiers. These are just regular townsfolk trying to defend their home and trying not to get eaten by wolves. So it really adds more of a terror factor there, which I did enjoy. Because most of the time, whenever you see fantasy stories like this, it's usually less of the common folk and more about the knights and soldiers taking on these things, which, again, I have no problem with, but this one really nails the common folk and how they are hoping to defend themselves because help is not exactly in great supply. Now, during all of this, Albert and Memborel make their way back into the town. They reach the town tavern, which is where the whole siege and the townsfolk are trying to defend themselves from. But during this process, Albert's father, Burrell, gets killed, and Albert himself actually gets bitten by the werewolf. Well, I say bitten, but it's more like he got one of his arms chewed off below the elbow. And from this, he became infected. Not only was he a werewolf, but because of this werewolf itself was diseased, then Albert essentially was cursed, well, doubly cursed, I should say, with the fact that any time he assumed a werewolf form after this, he would not ever be able to gain control of it. He would never be able to gain any cognitive thought. He would essentially just be a wild berserker and a threat to everything around him. So yeah, this book can take a dark turn and I absolutely love the fact that it's not afraid to address this. So during all of this, Auburn, as he is recovering from his sickness, brought on by the bite as well as the loss of blood, his grand hooks up with a, or at least gets in contact with, an old friend. This massive mountain of a man known as Mute, for the fact that he has scars across his throat, which I'm guessing have severed his vocal cords. Now, Mute himself is a man of mystery, but from his interactions throughout the story, you get the feeling that he has a very personal grudge against Quarks for one reason or another. Whether that issue is related to family or something in his past from Quarks, it's never elaborated on. But Mute definitely hates Quarks. Like, he actually brings back their scalps as trophies, which is pretty grisly, not gonna lie. But at the same time, it just shows that this man is not to be messed with. So, Albert is forced to leave behind his home. He's dealing with the fact that now he is cursed as a werewolf. And he's hanging out with a stranger who is supposedly looking after him for the sake of his gran. But he does not know this until further in the story. So Albram goes through a major bout of depression where at one point he just feels like he can't feel anything in the world anymore. Like everything's gone gray, which is very apt to describe depression. When you feel depressed, you don't really feel like doing anything. Everything becomes like a dull monotony to it. But again... So all of them has to deal with this, and Mute actually has to tie all of them down to a rock every time the full moon comes out to make sure that all of them doesn't go on a full-fledged rampage, which is understandable, but also extremely messed up a little, a little bit. Anyways, with the help of a dwarf brought by Mute, they actually create a small charm, a silver charm, mind you, which will wrap around Alvarum's damaged arm where he was bitten, and thus this acts as a deterrent for Alvarum. It helps to keep him from transforming in the first place. While it is painful, because silver is a major 
thing that werewolves hate, like it is poison to them. At the very least, it allows Auburn to gain control of himself little by little over the course of the many full moons. He trains, gets stronger, but he still has to cope with the fact that he's still living out in the woods. But overall, he and Mute, I definitely like that whole master and apprentice relationship that they built over the course of the book. I definitely like that. But that's not the only element we had here. There were elements that show that there are, in fact, groups of people who are specifically tasked with tracking down werewolves, or cursed, as they are called. And you can definitely see this with a more, I want to say, corrupted duke, who is both trying to gain more wealth to himself, but also is trying to take out any major threats to his, him or any of his properties, specifically werewolves or assassinations. Any of his enemies that he wants dead, he has the money and connections to secure that. Which we find out later on in the book, when it is revealed by Mute to Albram that there's actually a wanted poster of his gram. Which, that definitely took me by surprise as I was reading it, not going to lie. When I heard that gram was just suddenly all of a sudden wanted, I'm like, okay, what did this woman do to warrant that, a wanted poster? Which I guess I'll have to find out in the sequel book. But, I did like the progression here, especially with how you see Mute and later Albram doing this sort of guerrilla warfare tactics with the Quargs, like assaulting Quark villages, defiling their sacred statues, as well as also just really making their days a living hell. Which is made even more complicated by the fact that the Quargs actually make a deal with other werewolves. And we definitely see a difference here with Alburn as well as the other three werewolves. Like, between the three adult werewolves compared to young Alburn, who is just a literal pup by this point, you really get the sense that there is a major power gap here, especially with the fact that these werewolves actually have control of a pack. Like, a massive pack of wolves from, like, regular size to larger size. It's generally pretty horrifying. But... I'm actually pretty excited to dive into the second book to see what more there is for this. However, I do have one minor criticism here. And it is not the writing of the story, but rather the... How should I put this? The writing itself? Like, the physical writing. like The print, I should say, is very small and in bold. So I will say this much, if you intend to read it, I will advise you now, either read it in a very bright light, that way it's not so much of a strain in your eyes, especially with a small print, but also, if need be, grab yourself like a magnifying glass of sorts, one that in particular will cover up an entire page, that way it's not so much of a strain on your eyes. That's the only minor criticism I have, because in just 147 books, again, Werewolves are a major threat, we get some very interesting characters, and some good world building. And I cannot wait to read book two. So, let's get on with the score, shall we? So all in all, I would have to give Alderman's Curse a good solid 8 out of 10, and I feel comfortable putting it right there. For the main fact that it has a good story, engaging characters, it brings werewolves to the forefront as a major threat again, with the only criticism being the small print and as well as possible strain on the eyes for any readers of this one. That is the only criticism I have, is just the small print. And that is a very minor criticism at that. Anyways, you guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video review. And especially if you're a fan of werewolves and are looking for a new book that actually brings them as a major threat, go ahead and check this one out. And I hope this review actually inspired you to read it for yourselves. And I'd love to hear your all's thoughts if you ever pick this one up for yourselves. Anyways, you guys, if you did like this video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and if you did like more videos, feel free to subscribe. And I will see you all again in the future for more book reviews. Have an awesome day, and keep reading, my friends.